Okay, now there is a, a, a psychological uh, theory called ABC theory, uh, cognitive ABC model or theory. Now, it's also in the Bible. The Bible doesn't use the term ABC, but it's, it, this ABC will explain why people uh, have negative emotions. Now, first there is A, there is adversity, a difficult situation. And then B, the belief. And then C, the consequence. For instance, if, um, now here in this case, uh, someone was not selected for choir, and then the person believed, I have a terrible voice, I was never going to be any good at singing, then the consequence, then he feels sad and give up on practicing singing. So when he believed that he cannot sing, then he will have the consequence, he will be unhappy, and he won't have any motivation to, to practice singing. For instance, some people, um, they get sick, and then they, they're thinking, oh, God must be punishing me, because they think that, you know, they have negative thoughts about God. God must be punishing me, and so I'm having sickness, so I'm suffering. And when they have that belief, the consequence is they will feel very, very sad. God doesn't like me, and now I have sickness, I have no hope. So when people have negative thinking, it will keep, the negative thinking will bring negative feelings. Now when people have positive thinking, they will build up positive feelings. For instance, when anything happens, they say, I believe that God will help me. God has helped me last time. He will help me this time. Nobody can take away the blessings of God. And then when they have this positive thinking, they choose to pray to God and praise God and thank God. Then the consequence, they have more peace. So it's very important for us to have biblical beliefs, beliefs from the Bible. And th that's what I've been emphasizing. Trust in the promises of God. Then our thinking will be positive. God will for sure help me. Therefore, I will relax. I trust in God. I don't have to worry. But when people always look at the, you know, the difficulties, look at the bad people, uh, look at the bad situation, and they say, oh, it's hopeless, nothing can change. When they think nothing can change, then it will become a self-fulfilled prophecy. They will become more and more unhappy. So I hope we learn to build up positive thinking. Okay, now here, the negative event, A, and then the rational thinking. The thinking according following the Bible and following good reasoning then he will have healthy emotion. Now, if there is a negative event and then the person have irrational belief that, oh, God is not helping me, I'm good for nothing, nobody likes me, then he will have unhealthy negative emotions. Now, the ABC theory of emotional change, it can change. Now, ABC, belief. So a person has this activating event or adversity and then the belief and then the consequence, the emotional and behavior. Now, in the past, when something uh, unpleasant happened, he'll become unhappy. But now, we can change it. D would be uh, disputing interven uh, intervention. So, so he want to change this belief. Effect on uh, effect. An effective philosophy is developed. So he developed a a new philosophy, that means a new belief, and then new feeling. So he can change the belief, and he'll have new feelings. He will say, God will help me, I can overcome this problem step by step, day by day I can overcome, and I have improved a little bit, and I thank God for that, I can be happy because I have uh, tried to help, and God is helping me, I'm more joyful, then they are more positive. So we want to learn to be positive on ourselves and on people. And that's why I talk about preaching. When we preach, don't make people feel hopeless. Now Jesus, when he spoke to the disciples, he never made them feel hopeless. 
Even when they, he said that they have little, little faith, he would say, when you have faith like a mustard seed, you can move the mountain. So Jesus always gives people hope. When Peter was about to deny him three times, Jesus said, I pray for you that you will not lose your faith. And then when you uh, uh, turn back to me, then uh, build up your brothers. So Jesus is always positive. He never just criticizes and then uh, doesn't give hope. He always gives hope. He says, I pray for you. I will help you. And then when you turn back, help your brothers, strengthen your brothers. So Jesus gave him assignment to bless other Christians. So that's Jesus thinking. So when we preach, we don't want to tell people, you're good for nothing, you're lazy, you're, you're always, uh, you're no good, you don't, God doesn't like you, we don't like you. We don't ever want to talk like that. We always want to give people hope in Jesus. Even when we have sinned a lot, when we repent, God is very happy. And then we don't want to sin anymore because sins are destructive. When we obey God, it will bring blessings and God will be very happy with you. So now start to repent and God is very happy. And you start to pray to God, God is very happy and He'll bless you. you don't, we, want, we don't want to say it like this. You don't pray enough. We don't have to say, don't say the part that He did not do well. Don't say, you don't pray enough. We say, when you pray, God will bless you. That is a positive way of looking at it. And for us too, when I trust in God, God will bless me. Instead of saying, oh, I did not trust in God enough. Don't say the part that we don't, well, don't do well enough. Don't say to people, you don't love God enough. But instead we'll say, when you love God, God will provide for you things you never imagined. So we always want to be positive to ourselves and to people. And that will change the thinking. So the teaching from yesterday and today, it helped people to have positive thinking and then the positive thinking will change people's emotions to have to be more positive and then your church members will be will have positive thinking and more positive emotions and they will be more joyful. So you can ask your church members what kind of thinking do they have? Do they have any negative thinking? How we can how can we change that negative thinking so that we have positive thinking? How can we change are thinking that we can have positive emotions when we choose to rejoice in the Lord and thank God for everything. Okay, let me explain what are positive thinking. So what are some positive thinking? God loves me strongly all the time, not because of our goodness, but because He is love. God is love. So that's positive thinking. God is love and He loves me strongly. And God has a wonderful plan in our lives. We are very precious in God's sight. He wants us to enter His plan. Even though we have weaknesses, we can gradually enter His plan when we offer a body as a living sacrifice. Even if we have sinned much, God still wants us back. When we repent, He's super happy. So even when we have sinned, it looks like, you know, some for some people they say, oh, it's terrible, I have sinned. But even when when we have sinned much, uh, still God still wants us back. And when we repent, He is very, very happy. And God can help us to live a joyful and fruitful life. He can help us to be joyful and be, to be fruitful. He continues to help us. He never gives up on us. If we stay in Him, He will make His plan come true. So He has a wonderful plan for me. If I stay in Him all the time and obey Him, respond to the Holy Spirit, then His plan, His perfect plan will come true. And God doesn't mind how weak we are. He can give us strength and wisdom. When we are weak, doesn't matter. God will help us. God will give us strength and we can improve step by step. Okay, now five steps to victory. Uh, this is a teaching that you can use for all areas for overcoming sin, overcoming negative and positive emotions, for overcoming our weaknesses, whatever problem, we can use these five steps to victory. First, be aware of the problem. So here is aware of the negative thinking and emotions. Do we think negatively about ourselves? Do we think negatively about other people, about the situation, about the church, about the world? Now the world is not going well because of sin. But we'll say in God, I have hope to bless the world as far as 
how we can change people's life with the gospel. Now we can change, we cannot change the world from entering the last days. The world will enter the last days and there will be a lot of suffering, a lot of wars and famines. We cannot change that. But we can change it as far as changing people's beliefs, help them to believe in Jesus, and then the life can be changed. And then if we build up more and more people, this can influence the world more and more. And then believe that negative thinking and emotions are destructive. So the first point is aware of our problem. Second is destructive. Third is Bible. Apply the biblical principle to the problem. What does the Bible tell me to do? The Bible tells me to rejoice in the Lord. The Bible tells me not to be affected by negative people. What can people do to me? Because God is helping me. So And then pray for forgiveness and strength. So ask God to forgive us and give us strength. And then choose to have positive thinking and emotion. Now this is the part that many people think is very, very hard. But we can choose. Now let me use an illustration. Someone is very happy with a girl. He likes the girl very, very much. And he's very unhappy at one point. At one point he's unhappy about different things. And then this girl show up. And the girl said something to him. Nice, said something nice to him. What would the guy do? He would immediately control his emotions. He would not yell back at the girl. He would immediately change his tone of voice and say, Oh, nice to see you. I'm happy to see you. Immediately he will put down the negative emotions and put on positive emotions and, and put on positive thinking and say positive words. So people can choose to change when they face a person that they like. When they see someone they like or some food they like, they will become very happy. So we can choose to change. Even when we see that, wow, the situation is very difficult. We just, so we have to memorize Bible verses and say, even though I go through the valley of darkness, that uh, the shadow of death, that God will deliver me, that God is with me all the time, it doesn't matter. Now, first I want to say I memorize my Bible mostly in Chinese. <laughs> so sometimes I translate from the Chinese Bible. I memorize because mostly my ministry is in Chinese. So I memorize most of the verses in Chinese. Uh, although I do remember, I memorize some verses in English. So we choose to have positive thinking and choose to have positive emotions. This is something we can practice from small things. Um, I remember one time I went to a shop to buy something and by the time I arrived there, on the way I know that the time was very tight and by the time I arrived there, the shop closed and the person refused to open the door. He said, come tomorrow. And that night I noticed that I was unhappy. I don't know why. And then I asked myself, why am I unhappy? And then I noticed that, oh, it's because I could not get in the shop that time and buy the thing I want. And then I tell myself, tomorrow I can go again. So I don't have to be unhappy. So I choose to, to be happy again. Now it has happened in other situation. So first you can practice doing that in easier situation. And then the difficult situation is when someone hurt us. And then we can keep saying, God will bless me, it doesn't matter. I don't have to think about what the person has said. He cannot hurt me because God will protect me. Now one time someone hurt me and I really, you know, I was hurt. And I handled it and I feel more joyful. I praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, you are always good to me. You will bless me. And I feel joyful. And I went to sleep. In the middle of the night when I woke up, I find that I feel pressure in my heart. So I'm, I'm, I was still affected by the person. And then I would tell myself again, I tell myself again, God helps me. It doesn't matter. That person cannot steal from me. I can be joyful. I choose to be joyful. The next night, it, doesn't hap it didn't happen again. So sometimes it takes more than one time to handle negative emotions. 
sometimes it takes time and so it's something we need to learn to and practice and this five step to victory is something we can remember so first aware of problem if it is a sin problem and then I be we believe that it's destructive even though we can ask God to forgive us still is destructive like when we yell at someone we can ask God and the person to forgive us but the relationship would have been hurt sometimes it's a hurt a little bit sometimes it's hurt seriously sometimes the relationship can be hurt uh, in such a way that it cannot go back anymore that we cannot restore anymore and then what does the Bible say the Bible say don't sin anymore sin will bring destruction and then pray for forgiveness and strength and then I choose to obey God so I choose to in the heart if we have negative thinking we say I choose to believe in the promises of God that God will bless me God will give me strength God will be God is with me all the time God is happy that I repent God is happy that I trust in him so we choose to say God is happy with me when I follow him God is happy with me when I obey him God is happy with me when I rejoice in God and thank God hallelujah praise the Lord God is happy that I praise the Lord so then we choose to be happy I choose to be happy we can think about some good things of God keep those in memory we can think about heaven one day I'll be in heaven no more trouble and how God has blessed us in the past how we have experienced the Holy Spirit how we have experienced joy and peace and love and then uh, we say wow all these things it's uh, are so good and I want to be joyful happy because God has brought many good things to me okay now here <clears throat> how to change our thinking in different in difficult situations so we have here a problem and then the negative thinking of many people and the positive thinking how to change it to positive thinking so someone mistreated me and then the negative thinking is I'm miserable someone hurts me the positive thinking I don't have to carry his problem that is his problem I can handle the problem I don't have to carry it uh, God will pay me uh, give me uh, give my uh, give blessings to me back to me whatever he has stolen God will give back to me someone despised me someone looked down upon me and the negative thinking is nobody likes me I'm nobody but the positive thinking is God has a plan to make me better even though I'm weak now I'll become better and better and then I fail in something I did not do something well and the negative thinking is I'm a failure I cannot do anything well and the positive thinking I can try again I learn from the failure even if I improve a little bit even if I improve 1% 100 days I have well, improved 100% I just keep improving it no problem okay the problem is I sinned and then the negative thinking is oh God and people don't won't forgive me but then positive thinking is I can apologize I can ask God to forgive me I can overcome the sins and I was fired uh, this is difficult but God can still provide a job for me so the negative thinking is I cannot find a job and the positive thinking is God can help me I can wait patiently I can wait patiently that God help me to find a job okay my wife does not like me and then the negative thinking is my marriage will fail the positive thinking I can find a problem and change so I can ask her what did I do wrong uh, how can I improve please tell me I I need to hear from you I need your help now I want to say that husband and wives are very different male male and females are very different uh, it's hard for a man to understand a woman it's hard for a woman to understand a man because a man usually is more interested in activity in doing things women are more interested in feelings and relationship and what women look for are the husband will care for her listen to her listen to her feelings to her emotions the wife looks for that and the husband say just take care of the problem don't worry about it so the husband just want action and he doesn't want to listen to the wife that's why there are a problem of many marriages because many men don't spend time listening they, he think that he'll say that oh my wife is nagging too much she gets emotional too often she gets unhappy too easily I, I cannot bear her 
I, I want to tell you that any woman who don't get love, any woman who doesn't get love will be emotional because women are affected by love or a lack of love. And then when they don't have love, they will feel emotional. So a husband need to listen and pay attention to her and respond to her and love her and care for her. And then she will be the, a very good wife. And then for husband, uh, he wants the wife to respect him, to, to believe in his, that he is capable, that he can do things, to support him. But some wives would cut down on the husband and also some wife would nag too much. Men don't like nagging. So the wife can, you know, uh, to, you know, if the wife show love to the husband, uh, care for the husband, to gradually change the husband, not to push him to change and to respect him, then it's easier to change. And uh, so this is man and woman. And you can look online for marriage. Pastor Yip, I have many uh, videos on that. So you can watch those and that will help you. So many people think my marriage will fail. So we can find out the problem and change and listen to their person. If a person gets married, be prepared. We need to learn to listen. Because as a single person, sometimes very often single person don't listen. They just do things their own way. They don't want to listen. So they think that after marriage, I don't have to listen. I've listened to my mother enough already. I don't want to listen to my wife anymore. I want a wife that doesn't complain. But when he doesn't pay attention to the wife, the wife will start to complain. No matter how pretty the wife is, some people think pretty wives don't complain. That's not true. Pretty wives still need to be loved. When they are not loved, they will complain. So uh, we want to listen to the wife and pay attention to her and care about her and then she'll become a very wonderful wife okay and then how can we overcome our emotions it's the belief very important belief that we can rejoice in God even when things go very wrong Habakkuk 3 17 to 18 though the fig tree may not blossom nor fruit be on the vines though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. So even though when things go wrong, we trust in God. God saves me and God will help me. God will help me overcome the problem step by step. So when there are problems, there's no reason to uh, complain and be unhappy and close relationship with God will bring joy and comfort uh, of the body and of the mind uh, David said I have set the Lord always before me bec because he is at my right hand I shall not be moved therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices my flesh also will rest in hope so when we always set the Lord before me. that means to have a close relationship with God then when he's at my right hand I shall not be shaken I shall not be moved therefore my heart is glad then we'll have joy and my glory rejoices as my spirit will rejoice and my flesh will also rest in hope my body will rest in hope I will sleep better now thinking about God's goodness changed the thinking and the emotions Psalm 77, you can read the whole psalm. Uh, it talks about a person who was in depression. And then he started to think about the goodness of God and then he recovered. I remember God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. This is talking about his difficult situation. And then he was thinking, has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his tender mercies? And I said, this is my weakness. So he started to think about it. Is it God, God's fault? Did God forget to bless me? So he said, this is my weakness. I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. So he started to remember the years how God has blessed him. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. 
So he starts to remember the good things and then he becomes peaceful and joyful again. So when we are negative, don't start continue to think about negative things, but we want to think about the positive things, the good things of God, the promises of God, and rejoice in the Lord. And then we can be restored uh, when we choose to say, yes, I can follow God and God will bless me. And God makes us, make us very special people, so we don't have to be depressed. We don't have to have a, a low self-image. 1 Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we are very special. Each person is very special. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood to bring people to God and bring God to people, a holy nation, his own special people. We are all special people that we can proclaim the praises of God who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, we can proclaim the goodness of God. Now this is what I've been doing, to proclaim the praises of God, the goodness of God. So you notice that when I preach, I always talk about the goodness of God, how wonderful God is, how good God is. So we can uh, uh, always think about the goodness of God and believe that God has a wonderful plan in our life. We can all become special ple people. And God can bring in a healing. Now when we have have uh, have had negative thinking and emotions we need healing and the spirit of the lord god is upon me because the lord has anointed me to preach good news good tidings to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim lib liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to comfort all who mourn the oil of joy for mourning so god can heal he can uh, heal the brokenhearted and give us liberty, freedom from any kind of bondage and then comfort us who are mourning and give us the oil of gladness instead of mourning. So we need to do inner healing. Now how can we do inner healing? First we can praise God and love God and we can think about all the good things God has done in our lives and we say God has done this and He will continue to do it. And uh, sometimes we can go back to the situation. Now the Bible says that God is all, all present, omnipresent. He is present all the time, even before we were, uh, became a Christian. So when we were suffering, we can go back to the situation when someone is hurting us. And then we can ask God, God, were you there? And we know from the Bible He was there. And we can ask God, what did you want to say to me at that time? What do you want to say to me now about, what, uh, about me at that time? And thoughts can come to us from the Bible. That there might be thoughts saying, you're special. I have a plan to save you. I have a plan to heal you. I want to lift you up. You are special. You don't have to stay in those days. You don't have to stay in the suffering of those days. You can be lifted up so God can speak to us. Or we can speak to ourselves in the past. We can say, I know in the past you were suffering, you have, you're in pain, uh, you have been hurt by people, but God has a plan to heal you and you can be healed. So we can do inner healing ourselves. And basically we can just relax and enjoy God. God come to comfort me. Give me peace. And just singing songs will help. Lord Jesus, you are loving me. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you're so wonderful. Okay, we can come to God with confidence to get help anytime. Hebrews 4.16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So anytime we can come boldly, to God. It's like a little child coming to the father or mother. Come to jump up to the lap of the father or mother. We can always come to our father and mother, our heavenly father. He will give us help and mercy. So have confidence that God is happy that we come to him. And we need to learn to clear our garbage. If anyone has hurt us, we want to 
Forget about it. Dump the garbage. If we have been thinking, oh, I'm no use, we have to change it and say, put it down, put it down. Because God is a wonderful plan. God is believing different things about me than I'm thinking. You know, we might be thinking neg negative things about ourselves, but God is thinking good thoughts about us. So we dump the garbage. Someone says something to me, you know, some people, they always keep talking about what other people did to them. Some people came to me for counseling. They keep talking one time, two times, three times, always talking about all the negative things people have done to them. And then I would say, you know, I know you're suffering, I know it's painful, and uh, do you want to handle this? Do you want to find ways how you can put this down? How you can put this down and how you can put on the gladness of God and the hope of God? How can you do that? And so we want to guide people to think of how we can put down the garbage and put on the good things of God. Now this would help us when we are emotional. When we are emotional, sometimes we might not be able to think immediately. Then what we can do is deep breaths. When we are very unhappy, we can take deep breaths. Relax and take deep breaths and then we'll feel better. Take a drink, a nap, some exercise. We can talk to God about problems and emotions. We can tell God, I'm very unhappy now. Lord, I need you now. Sing praises to God or da dance to God. Express our emotions to someone mature, not gossiping. Just tell them, I'm very unhappy now. And the person responds with acceptance. This person must know how to do it. If the person gossips, then it's not the right thing to do. But if the person is mature and he accepts with you know, he respond with acceptance and pray with us and comfort us and sing with us, that would be helpful. And we, then we need to manage our thinking and emotions and then we appreciate our effort to improve. Oh, I have worked on it. I have improved. So we can appreciate and say, oh, I'm doing well today. Now we need to understand that emotions are faster than thinking. It's like the hare, the rabbit, is faster than the turtle is running faster. So we need to keep managing our emotions. Our emotions are very fast. When we see something unpleasant, immediately we already have negative feelings, immediately, without any thinking. That, um, you know, before we start to think, already the emotions are there. So we need to realize that the emotions come very quickly. So we need to calm down and say, Lord, help me to manage my emotions. How can I manage? First, we need to manage our emotions before we can help a problematic person. Now, if we are serving God, or when we are handling problems in a, uh, in a family, the Bible tells us, Jesus tells us that if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. If not, you find, take one or two. If not, you tell the church. Now, but if we are emotional, you, we cannot handle it well. So we, first thing we want to do, we want to calm down first. If we have a problem with a family member, with someone in church, we want to think through it. Find a peaceful way. Find someone peaceful to talk with you. How to handle the problem before we start to handle the problem. So calm ourselves down first before we handle the problem. And living in God's love will result in a joyful life all the day long and say, O oh Lord, satisfy us early with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. So when we live in the love of God, then we can rejoice all the days of our life. And the best way to have joy is to stay in God's love all the time. So I hope that you will, you know, this, uh, you can apply this. If you have any questions, please send it to me and I'll answer your questions. And God bless you. This is very important message and training because you can help your members, you can help your family members. But remember, when your family members is unhappy with you, don't say, I'm going to teach you how to do it. It doesn't work. When he's unhappy, he cannot take any teaching. When he's unhappy, we just try to calm him down. And don't say, don't cry, don't shout. We say, I'm sorry. 
uh, tell me your problem, tell me what you're unhappy about, tell me what you, I can do. So instead of telling him to change, we just tell him what I can do to change. What can I do? So uh, we need to calm ourselves down before we can handle any problem, especially problem with people. So God bless you. Now please stand up. Actually, when you pray, you stand up. It's easier to experience the Holy Spirit. You can experience the swaying of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit moving your body. So stand up now. We'll pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you because you are a peaceful God. Lord, we can live in you and you are happy with any good thing we do for you. Thank you, Lord. You are a wonderful God. You are a peaceful God. You are a joyful Lord. Please help us to overcome our problems. We have negative emotions. Please help us. We have negative thinking. Please help us. Help us to live in your peace, to believe that you're always blessing us. You want to bless those who trust in you. When we follow you, you always will bless us. Lord, help us to trust in you alone and not to be affected by people, not to be affected by emotions. We don't have to take the negative words of people. We don't have to keep thinking about the negative words of people. We can keep thinking about your goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We worship you. We adore you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. If you have any questions, please send to me. And uh, God be with you, okay?